Hey there, makers. It's Professor Gallagher, and in this lesson, we'll provide a gentle introduction to Ohm's Law, focusing on how to choose the right resistor to work with an LED light that we'll use with our Raspberry Pi Pico and that we'll use in future CircuitPython projects. Let's learn big! Far too many maker projects suggest using a 220 ohm resistor with an LED bulb without providing any context. Now, while 220 ohm for an LED isn't a bad rule of thumb, we can do better. I'm going to show you how to choose the right resistor to match a 10 millimeter LED that we'll use in future lessons, but the techniques learned here should apply to other LEDs that you might use, and hopefully you'll understand how to use Ohm's Law in other contexts as well. Now we won't get into more complex calculations, say for multiple LEDs in a single pin, or considering series versus parallel resistor calculations, but hopefully this is a good place to start our learning. And the same principles used here should apply when calculating resistor values for other projects where a single LED is connected to a GPIO pin. Now without getting too deep into the weeds of electrical theory, we use a resistor on an LED component because if we supply too much electricity, the bulb might burn out or the LED might have a much shorter life. In fact, even if we use a resistor, but the resistor is far smaller than we need, we can still have these problems. But if we use a resistor that's too big, well, we'll unnecessarily dim our LED, and if we use a resistor that's much too big, we might not see any light at all. So what we want is a resistor size that's just right, Goldilocks. So how do we figure this out? Well, we use Ohm's law. Now this is a super simple calculation where three factors are in balance, voltage, current, and resistance. Now this analogy may or may not be helpful, but imagine these crouchy guys going through a tube as electrons going through a wire. Now amps, named after this guy here, measure the current, which is the amount of electricity flowing through a circuit. Greater amps, think of it as more crouchy electron guys moving past a point in a given period of time. Now voltage is pressure. Think of it as this dude here who's pushing the crouchy electron guys through the wire. More pressure, more voltage, and amps increase. But things are in balance. Ohms up here refers to resistance. This guy here restricts the flow of our crouchy electron guys. More resistance, fewer crouchy electron guys getting through during a given period. So again, these factors are in balance. What we really care about are the numbers. And if we have the number for voltage and our current measured in amps, then we can find the ohms value and choose the right resistor. And just so you know, sometimes in electronics projects like this, the components that we're looking at are measured in milliamps, which are one thousandths of an amp. Now, how do we find these numbers? Well, the voltage is actually a calculation. What we need to do is we need to take a look at the supply voltage. In our case, that's gonna be the power that's coming from the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now we're eventually gonna be connecting our LED to one of the digital pins on our Pico. And all the digital pins on the Pico provide 3.3 volts. But then what we need to do is we need to subtract the voltage drop when electricity flows through the LED. So yes, electricity flowing through a component doesn't flow through unimpeded. It actually experiences a voltage drop. You can sort of consider this like a bit of inertia that cuts the initial pressure. And we can actually find that number in the specs on the product page from where I ordered the product. Now, once we subtract these values and find the voltage, we need to divide this by the forward current of the LED. And we'll also find that on the product page. Now, this calculation is easy enough to make, but I'm going to be super lazy and use the calculator on the webpage ohmslawcalculator.com. And here are the values that we need to fill in voltage and current, and this will give us our resistance. So now let's take a look at the page where I ordered my LEDs from. And ah, we see right here, it says that this product has a 20 milliamp forward current. So let's return to the calculator. And for current, I'll put in 20 and then select milliamps instead of amps so that I don't have to divide by 1000. Now remember, we said that the voltage was going to be a subtraction that starts with the voltage supplied by the Pico over the digital IO pins. And just to show you, the Raspberry Pi folks say on this page that that value is indeed 3.3 volts. But then we need to subtract the forward voltage drop as electricity passes through the LED. So back to our order page. And this value is a bit tougher to find, but it was given down in the Q&A section for this page. And now the numbers can vary according to LED color, but for the red LEDs, that number's between 2.0 and 2.2 volts. I'll be conservative and use 2.0, so our voltage value will be 3.3 minus 2.0, which gives us an Ohm's Law voltage value of 1.3 volts. And now that we've got our voltage value and our current value, we can click on calculate and we get a resistance value of 65 ohms. And just so you know about wattage in here, we want to make sure that the resistor that we're using is rated for a wattage value that's greater than the value that we see here. And if we look at the resistors that we're using, these are quarter watt resistors, which is pretty standard. A quarter watt resistor is 0.25 watts, which is much larger than 0.026. 
So we figured out we need a 65 ohm resistor, but a little snag, 65 ohms isn't a standard resistor size. Now in this box of resistors that I've got, there's a 47 ohm resistor, which believe it or not is a standard size, and then the next one up is a 100 ohm resistor. Either would be fine, but a resistor that has a bit higher value is more conservative than one that's a bit lower. So I'm gonna choose the 100 ohm resistor. Just make sure you're selecting 100 ohms and not 100K ohms, that's 100,000 ohms. That's a really easy mistake to make, and if you did that, your LED wouldn't light up at all. So hopefully this short video is useful in illustrating basic resistor size calculations for LEDs connected to GPIO pins. In our next lesson, we'll wire our LED to our Pico and we'll eventually use this to create a very useful project that turns on a light when it's time to take medications. This lesson is part of my Physical Computing University course. You'll find all the videos for this course on my channel, as well as content for my other course on iOS app development. Good luck and make something awesome.